Michelle, again. And here in Hawaii, we really love beachy things, like beach glass, even if it's not real, and shells, and gemstones. So we came up with this beachcomber necklace to combine all the things we love. Plus, we wanted some little wave accents, so we made this little swirly component here that we used to embellish the front of the otherwise what could be plain beach glass or recycled glass pendant that we have here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make this little spiral component right now. And I'm going to show you how to shape it and also hammer it on our beautiful new bench block and hammer that we have today in the store. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to start with a pre-cut length of wire anywhere from say like two and a half inches to four inches depending on how big you want your component to be and you want to make sure that the ends are flush cut so you don't want little pointy ends so you can clean off your ends if they're kind of pointy and then we can get started with the spirals I'm going to pick up my round nose plier and as close to the tip as I can Grab the wire close to the tip of the plier so you get a nice small curve and I'm going to roll my wrist away from me until I get almost a closed loop like this. If you want to tighten up that little curve a little bit more, you can get a chain nose or a flat nose plier, something with a flat jaw, and give that a little bit of a squeeze. I'm going to use my round nose plier again and anchor it in that little curl that I made and use it to make my spiral like that. Now, I don't have too much wire here so I'm going to stop at that point so I have a small spiral. I'm going to turn the wire around and do the same thing on this end and I want my two spirals to curl towards each other so it'll look like a little mustache. Okay, again grab the tip of the wire. You don't want it to stick out, otherwise you're going to have a flat space on your little curl. So as close to the tip as you can and roll. And see how I'm bracing the wire against the plier with my thumb of my left hand. Again, switch pliers to something with a flat jaw so you can squeeze that little curl a little bit tighter if you want. Make it nice and small. And then we're going to stick the round nose plier back in there and use that to form your shape like this. And notice I'm not forming the wire around the jaw of the plier. I am just using the pliers to kind of hold the wire as I push it with my finger. Now we're going to need a little bit of wire in the middle for our bend, so I'm not going to make them touch. And how much wire you leave here is going to determine the size of the little swishy bend that you have in the middle. Okay, Because my wire is really small, I'm going to still use my round nose plier and shape the little bend with it. If I had a bigger shape, say like this one here, and notice how big that little swishy bend in the middle is. You can shape that with either a long round nose plier that has a bigger jaw than this one, or a wrap and tap plier. Okay, but you're gonna do it all the same way. Pretty much you're just gonna grab the wire where you want your curve to start, and then you're just gonna push the wire around like this. There we go. And you didn't want your two swirls to be the same size because I like asymmetrical things. And then it doesn't look so much like a mustache. <laughs> okay, so 
You can fool around with this, like where the curve is to make one side higher than the other, or you can roll your spiral up so it's, you know, one is higher noticeably so than the other. Okay. Okay. Just very organic. Okay. And now when you're happy with the shape, we're going to hammer it with our metal hammer and bench block. This is my beautiful new bench block I am so excited to use today. Okay, it's like a work of art. Now I'm going to start hammering. I want um, kind of the middle of the swishy bend to be flatter than other parts. So I'm going to focus on hitting in that curved area there. And you can see the more you hit it and the harder you hit it in certain places, the flatter the wire gets over there, which is what we want. And then you can start hitting it lightly, like this. You don't have to hit very hard. And you want to keep your hammer head kind of flat to the surface of your bench block. There we go, nice and shiny, and the wire is getting a lot harder when I hit it with the hammer, which is what we want, so our little swirly can keep its shape. Okay, and then if you want to add a little bit of texture to the piece, I can flip it around to the round ball end of my hammer and start tapping it very lightly off the surface of the metal. Again, do not hit very hard here. The wire we're using is, this is 18 gauge silver fill wire, so it's soft. Okay, you don't want to, oops, you don't want to hit too hard because you don't want to dent the surface of your bench block, obviously, or damage your hammer. And there's no point to really hitting really hard. When we hammered it, sometimes the uh, curls can loosen up a bit or your bend can open up. And if it does, or if you want to make some final adjustments, you can go back in with your plier. The wire will be a bit stiffer than when you started, but that's okay. Okay. So just reshape it or adjust it until it's the shape you want. And there you go. We have our little spiral. So now I have my spiral component. I'm ready to assemble my beachcomber necklace. So I have about a yard of Chinese knotting cord here. So it's 0.5 millimeter. And I have a magic piece of fishing line to get my thread through my beads. So I'm going to fold my knotting cord in half hook my fishing line through and I'm going to start to string on the beads and I want my beads to be in this order here like this with my pendant on the bottom so I'm going to start stringing from the top top bead first sometimes you have to drill out your little gemstones to fit two pieces of this cord which we did string on a bead cap on my puka shell. That's and then my wire component. Okay. I'm gonna go from the front to the back like this and pull it just long enough so you can scoot your pendant in there. Pull the fishing line out cinch it tight. And you slide everybody on there like that. So I'm going to tie a knot on the top of my beaded section. I'm going to pull out my thread to the side and with the other thread I'm going to go over the top like this and go around the string. One, Two times like this so I have a little tunnel 
with my string, yeah, that I'm going to poke this thread through. my little tunnel and start to pull it a little bit tighter. We're eventually going to pull all the slack out. So the same thread that made the tunnel goes the through thread. the tunnel. Okay. Yeah. And this thread basically does nothing. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the lazy thread. Yes, the lazy thread and the tunnel thread. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now I'm ready to do my sliding knot to close off my piece. It would be easier if I had a clipboard, but I don't right now, so I'm just going to cross the threads of the necklace and lay them together. Get a new piece of thread about a foot long and do half of a square knot like this, and we want to pull it kind of tight around the two threads, okay, and then I'm going to do my P's and 4's for my sliding knot, okay, so I made a P, I'm going to go over the tail, under the core, and through the loop, okay, now I'm going to do a 4, This, over the tail, under the core, and through the loop. And we're going to do this about four times total. Okay, or until the sliding knot portion is as long as you want. You don't want to keep it too short because it doesn't hold as good and your threads can start to slip. But you don't want to make it too long because then it'll be too tight. It'll be hard to pull your threads to adjust the size of your necklace. Four. Trim really close to the lighter. Smush it down. Okay. I'm going to use about the whole yard of thread. do is make sure that the two ends are about the same length. String on the beads. Sometimes you can use your fishing line for a needle. Pull it in. And I'm just going to do double knot. to make it big because you don't want that bead to fall off and burn the end to fuse it so it doesn't fray. on my bead. Now sometimes pulling this through twice isn't going to work so you have to try to feed it in just once. And if it doesn't go through easily, which you can do, is burn the end with a lighter so you get a nice melty ball. Stick it to the side of the lighter and just kind of pull. You have nice a nice string leader. Like that. Then you can use a leader as a needle to pull it in. Okay. Trim that off. And we don't need to fuse it now because it's already fused. Do a double knot. 
like this. Now we're done. 